let's now talk about head and pressure. Let's look here at the picture and notice that uh, what we're trying to do in this particular situation is bring water up from, let's say, a creek or a pond. And we're going to send it up the side of a hill and dump it into a tank or pit or pond. Okay, so uh, we have to size our pump to be able to do this job. Now, what we have to know so that we can then go to a pump curve and select the proper pump is we have to know how much flow and head are required for this particular job. All right, well, so let's say we've determined and we'll talk about how to determine, uh, you know, flow required in uh, other videos, but in this one, let's say it's already been determined. We need 100 gallons per minute, okay? And that we're pulling it from this point down here in the, in the pond where it's, that is the source, and moving it, it has to move it all the way up to this point of discharge. So how much vertical head we say, that means what is the distance that this pump has to pump the water vertically, okay? Not measuring the distance, like with a tape measure from the point of inlet way down there, the suction, all the way up to the discharge. That's a different number. We're talking about vertical head here. This distance from wherever the water meets atmosphere here to the point of discharge, okay? So let's say that that is a total of 50 feet, all right? So what we now know is our head is 50 feet. Now we have to add in a little bit more head depending on what we're doing. In this case, what we're doing is we're sucking the water here through a pipe, uh, going through the pump, and then pushing the water out through a pipe. Well, we have to determine if more resistance is being created by the pipe or any fittings like this check valve. Does do they represent a little more resistance to the water getting to the point of use? And the answer is yes. We, have, we call that friction loss. And there are charts in which we determine how much, uh, in this case, 100 gallons a minute through, and what size is the pipe? Let's say it's 3 inch. How much resistance is created by trying to put 100 gallons a minute through a 3 inch pipe? And those charts will tell you that uh, we'll say uh, seven feet of resistance, additional resistance to the head, to the total dynamic head. See, we're adding in other uh, numbers, adding to the head so that we can calculate what size pump we're actually going to need. All right, so we need a pump that can pump 100 gallons a minute up 50 feet plus 7 more feet because of the resistance of the friction in the pipe, okay? And so we have 57 feet now of total dynamic head. Total dynamic head. Now, we have to also know, um, while we're pumping, does this water level go down? Does it start to go down? Because if it does, we need to calculate what this pump has to be able to do when the water draws down. This is very significant for submersible pumps in a well because they, they do tend to draw down more than you would get if this was, say, in a creek or a big lake or whatever. But if that goes down, then you got to add that back in. So let's say we know that this, this reservoir draws down about three feet. Okay, well, we want our pump to be able to pump 
when it gets down that low, we want it to still be able to pump. So we want to add three more feet, three more possible feet into the head. So now we have 60 feet of total dynamic head. Okay? Okay, so we would go to a uh, curve that might look something like this. And uh, we would do our little trick with our uh, rectangle and put it right down in there. And we're, we know we want our flow, uh, we said, to be 100 gallons a minute. Put that there. And now we have a total of 60 total dynamic feet of head. What are these increments? From 50, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, to 25. So those are worth 5 each. So we come up two of those to 60. And you can see where it places our point of, uh, our duty point, as we say. And let's put an arrow on it so we can see it just a little bit more clearly by itself. So that's where we're at, right? So what does that mean? Well, we're at about 55% efficiency. Not great. Uh, we might, and therefore, we might pick a different pump. Uh, we go to a different curve. We find the one that's a little more efficient. But in this case, let's say uh, uh, we were using this pump. Um, it's below which curve? Well, it's this one, which is the three horsepower. So we're going to need a three horsepower that's a two and a half by two inch with a five inch full diameter impeller. But in this case, we would trim it to about four and a, half, a quarter. See, it's in the area between these trims are, are for different, uh, creating different efficiencies in the pump by cutting down the impeller a little bit. Well, so we would be at about four and a quarter on the impeller. It would be a three horsepower and uh, uh, at about 55% efficiency. Okay, and so that's how we would uh, uh, select a pump for this little job that we had. So let's look here again at our drawing of our... our pumping situation and so we know uh, this would work now let's say uh, uh, we, we find out well no we're not just dumping water out we're pumping into a sprinkler system and the sprinkler system uh, requires 65 pounds of pressure 65 psi well now we have to convert that into vertical head to add to our total dynamic head that we then go back to the, uh, the pump curve and see what pump is going to be required. So uh, 65 uh, psi. And the way you uh, the way you convert it is multiplying by 2.31. So uh, you should kind of get that number in your head. It's, you know, one, two, three. Take the one off the front and put it on the back. 2.31. You take 65 times 2.31, and that is 150. So 150 more feet of head we have to add in to our total dynamic head to be able to pressurize those sprinklers properly. All right, so where were we? 150 and it was uh, 60, so now we're going to be at 210. Okay, so now we would go to a curve that would uh, fit our duty point better, and we're going to arrange our little box here to reflect what we're trying to do. So we want to be at uh, 100 gallons a minute. Let me show it. And our total dynamic head 
is 210. What are these? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are 220. So it's going to be a little bit less right around in there. So we're smack dab in the middle of this. As you can see, I'm going to put the arrow at our duty point right here and get rid of our square so we can see what's going on. Okay, so as you can see, we're, we're in the sweet spot here in the most efficient uh, uh, range represented by this curved line going like this. Uh, that's uh, 40. Anything uh, above that curved line is approaching more 43%, which is the best this pump can do. Uh, in this case, and uh, we're, you can see on the dotted lines here where the horsepower is going to fall. So on this particular pump, uh, we are between, we're below the 15 and above the 10, so that means we have to use a 15 horsepower. So you can see at this point here, this pump will do 100 at 210 total dynamic uh, feet and head. And um, and that's how you would select a pump. Now, now um, this curve, I just pulled one out because I knew it could do 100 at about 200 feet. But uh, this may not be the best pump for the job. Um, that you learn with experience, and you can find uh, maybe a more efficient uh, type of pump, like a, uh, a multi-stage pump to get that higher pressure. But that's how you would go about uh, coming up with your total dynamic head. That's Those are the basics. Now, it, gets, it can get a little bit more complicated. We'll go into that in other lessons. But this is the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of how you have to go about calculating your duty point, which is knowing your flow and your head. Flow headly. All right. By the way, TDH is also represented by the symbol of a triangle. Sometimes you will see that. 